City Council meeting for Monday, August 11th. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we'd move on to the adoption of previous council meeting minutes. I think our first set was uh, July 14th. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Given I move the minutes of the City Council meeting held July 14th, 2014 be adopted. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Did anyone have any errors or omissions that they spotted in that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote to adopt. Thank you. And that motion carries, and we'd go to 3.2, the adoption of the special council meeting minutes. Councillor Rice. Adoption of the minutes of the special council meeting held July 22nd, 2014. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Uh, and again, did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ring again, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and we move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor. I move mean, the council adopt the agenda as presented with one addition, uh, subject to 132nd Avenue upgrades, phase two, CN rail to 132nd Street. Okay, and we'll add that as item 9.5. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, any discussion or debate on the agenda? Uh, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well, and that brings us to the delegation portion of the agenda. Um, council is back from its two-week hiatus. The gallery hasn't come back yet. Maybe they're still on their still summer break. Uh, but this is an opportunity every two weeks uh, at our regular city council meetings that council has for anybody in the community that would like to come forward and address council on any community-related matter. Just in case I'm not seeing somebody in the corners, is there anybody that wanted to come forward? It doesn't look like there is. Everybody that's here is being paid to be here. We see all staff and media. Um, so then we'll move on. We'll close the delegation portion of the uh, agenda. We'll move on to public hearings. And I would call to order the public hearing for Land Use Bylaw Amendment C-1260-14, the lands, interim landscaping requirements, and look to administration for an introduction. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, Councillors, so tonight I'll be explaining uh, bylaw amendment C1260 14, an interim amendment to the landscaping requirements. So I'm just going to quickly give you some background on the amendment, um, explain the need for a change in the way we calculate the requirements for plant materials, then I'll explain the change to the requirement for a certified landscape architect and conclude with our recommendations. So, quickly, with some background here. 
when we adopted the current land use bylaw, administration acknowledged that the landscaping requirements would need to be reviewed at a later date. So this is a continuation of that um, land use bylaw change. Um, based on comments from development officers as well as developers, we've identified some issues that need to be addressed urgently because they're holding up the development permitting process. And so this amendment is to quickly address those issues to provide us with some time to do a more thorough review of the landscaping requirements. Um, and on July 2nd, the Community Growth Committee supported uh, an interim amendment. So beginning with uh, the requirements for plant materials, put simply, the problem is that the current method for calculating the required number of trees and shrubs is not proportionate to lot size. So the solution is to use the lot size to calculate the required number of trees and shrubs. So here we have the three example methods of how we calculate required plant materials. So the first one on the left is the current method. Um, and you can see the rectangle kind of highlights the area we use to calculate uh, the required numbers. So the area that is in the blue lined hatch is the area we calculate. It's the setback area. And so we take that area and we use a ratio of one tree per 40 square meters of this setback area um, for industrial, commercial, and residential districts. Now it's worth noting that industrial districts don't have the same setback requirements. Generally, they're about half of what they are for residential and commercial districts. So there isn't the same need for a difference as there are in the other two methods. Um, and then we see a similar approach for shrubs. So it's one shrub for every 20 square meter in residential and commercial areas, but there is no requirement in industrial districts. So the next example in the middle is a previous bylaw. The way we calculated it is we took 10% of the total lot area for residential and commercial districts. And so we use a ratio of one tree for every 50 square meters of that 10% area. Now that works out to an equivalent of one tree for every 500 square meters of the total lot area. In industrial districts, we had about half that requirement, so it was based on 5%. So we applied one tree for every 50 square meters for that 5% area. And then for shrubs in commercial and residential districts, we had four shrubs for uh, every 100 square meters of the 10% area. It worked out to roughly one shrub, uh, sorry, not roughly, exactly one shrub for every 250 square meters of lot area. So in the interim um, amendment, the approach we took was to simplify the wording because in the land use bylaw, it could be confusing as to where we're applying a 10% calculation or where we're using the setback method to determine where you need to landscape. So we decided to eliminate that wording so that it would be simpler to understand when you are calculating the requirement for trees and shrubs. So the result is we applied the current ratio of one tree to 40 square meters to the entire lot. And the way that works out is we do one tree for every 400 square meters of lot area. So it's the equivalent of applying it to 10%, but the calculation is simpler. So in industrial districts, we followed with the trend of having half the requirement. And so it requires one tree for every 800 square meters of lot area. Now in commercial and residential districts, the result is one shrub for every 200 square meters of lot area. And we continue to not have a shrub requirement for industrial districts. Now the following few slides will highlight um, what is wrong with the current method. So you can see that the large rectangle represents the lot and the circles represent the relative size of the areas used to calculate based on the different methods. So what you can see here is that the setback area method uses a very large portion of the property to calculate. So it's roughly 18%, um, whereas the 10% method is 10%. So if you look at the table at the bottom, you can see under the current bylaw, we require 91 trees and 182 shrubs for this lot. Uh, under the old bylaw, we would require 40 trees and 80 shrubs. So in the interim bylaw, it would require 50 trees and 100 shrubs. So it represents the intended increase from the current bylaw, the new bylaw, but the method is proportionate to lot size. So um, the major problem comes up here. If you can see in this example, the lot is actually much smaller than the previous example, but the required setback area is exactly the same. So this represents 20% of the lot area that's being used to calculate the required number of trees and shrubs. So um, similarly, you see 91 trees and 182 shrubs, the same as the larger lot. Uh, under the old bylaw method, it was only 36 trees and 72 shrubs. In the interim one, 45 trees, 91 shrubs. So current ratio and it's more 
proportionate to lot size. Now, in the small lot example, you can see how drastic this gets. Um, the setback area represents 42% of the total lot area. So in theory, we are using 42% of the lot to calculate the requirements for trees and shrubs. So it goes from 33 shrubs, as, excuse me, 33 trees and 67 shrubs in the current bylaw to um, six trees and 12 shrubs in the old one. And so in the interim one, you have eight trees and 16 shrubs. Now this graph kind of shows you um, how these how they stack up. So on the current bylaw, you can see that the large lot and the irregular lot require the same number of trees. And then the small lot requires a very large number of trees um, compared to its size. Now in the old bylaw, you can see how it kind of looks like a staircase. They go down indicating that it's proportionate to the lot size. Now in the interim bylaw, you have the same effect. The required number of trees is proportionate to lot size, but it is still an increase from the old bylaw. Um, you have the exact same thing with shrubs. Um, so the way this works in the actual land use bylaw is uh, in the old section, I, we merely removed uh, Article 64.7, and this is the part where it's a large chunk, but it just explains that you're using the setback area to calculate the required number of trees. And so uh, lower at uh, 64.8 C and D, we changed the ratios to represent a calculation based on the total lot area. So once again, we have one tree for every 400 square meters of total lot area. Uh, in residential and commercial areas, and then one tree for every 800 square meters of total lot area in industrial districts. And then in residential and commercial districts, we have one shrub for every 200 square meters of total lot area. And so with the interim amendment, we simplify the calculation, we have a proportionate method, and it's a more reasonable increase in the requirement of trees and shrubs. Uh, now the next item in the interim amendment is when we require a certified landscape architect. Um, so the current bylaw requires a uh, licensed certified landscape technologist, designer, or architect that is in good standing with the Alberta Association of Landscaped Architects. Um, it's intended to promote a higher quality of design and having knowledgeable people conduct the design to ensure a longer lifespan for the plant materials. Now we are reconsidering how stringent these guidelines will be in the bylaw um, when we do the more thorough landscaping requirements review. However, for this amendment, we're simply clarifying uh, the intent of the land use bylaw. So we're not changing the requirements, we're only changing the wording so that it is more clear um, so here is what it will look like. We merely add uh, a little clarification at the beginning of the section. So for sites where the required landscape area is in excess of 500 square meters, that is exactly the same as the current requirement. It is just making it clearer. So um, to sum up, this is an interim amendment. It will address immediate issues, buying us time to do a more thorough review of the landscaping requirements. Um, the interim method for calculating the number of trees and shrubs is more proportionate to lot size and thus fairer to developers and facilitates the development permitting process. And then the amendment clarifies when a landscape architect is required. Um, we have notified stakeholders. We've sent letters to UDI and the Home Builders Association. And throughout the larger review, we will be conducting stakeholder engagement and public engagement to get their input. This is merely to address immediate issues. Um, so we recommend that this bylaw be adopted. Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, any questions for administration at this point before we open the uh, presentation submission portion? Councillor Lodi? Uh, we, uh, I'm glad to see that uh, uh, the agencies that you mentioned had been uh, consulted, but uh, as well we had several individual uh, applicants that had found problems with the landscaping requirements uh, under the previous regime. And I'm just wondering if you touched base with them and what impact the, these changes would have had on those. Uh, I can only think of the two examples, but there were two examples at least. Um, I was only made aware of one, well, Originally, when I began the project, um, I was made aware of, I believe his name was Dan Wong, his comments, so I was provided with his comments in writing, as well as Dale Williams has been in contact with me, and I have been considering their comments and concerns, and they will be, more of them will be considered in the long-term review, the more thorough review. Uh, however, this one was just to address the immediate issues that were holding up the permitting process. Thank you. Uh, 
on some of the things. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I really like how the process has gone here. I remember on the last council, land use bylaw was not small, it was big, but it's a work in progress. And I think a couple of maybe Councillor Logan's talking about there was some width of driveways that's still a work in progress. There was a couple that were left on the table that everybody knew about that would be still working on. So is, it, am I, is that correct? You just, there was a couple other ones too. Um, yes, this is part of several um, other amendments that we are considering. Driveway widths is one of them. And so it's basically just a list that we're working our way through. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I don't see anybody else in the queue for questions for administration. So I'd open the presentation submission portion of the public hearing. And I would call for anybody that would like to make a presentation or submission uh, in regards to this proposed interim land use bylaw amendment. I would call again to see if there's anybody that would like to make a presentation or submission. And I'd call a third and final time to see if there's anybody that would like to rush to the front to make a presentation. I don't see anybody making their way up. Um, and so one last opportunity if council has any questions for administration. I don't see anybody in the queue. So uh, motions are rising. Councillor Logan. Yeah, I would be pleased to uh, move a second uh, reading of bylaw C1260-14. Thanks very much, Councilor Logan. Discussion or debate on second reading? I don't see anybody in the queue. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Logan, do you want to do a second piece of business there? Thank you. I'd move uh, that we have third reading of bylaw C1260-14. Thank you. So a motion for third reading. Any discussion or debate on third reading? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well. That was all the items of business for that public hearing. So we move to 7.1, unfinished business. And uh, we have uh, borrowing bylaw C1308 and lending bylaw C1309 to facilitate the Grand Prairie Airport runway expansion and rehabilitation. I look for a motion for second reading. Sorry. Move second reading of borrowing bylaw C1308. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, discussion and debate? Councillor McClain. Thank you, Mary Given. I asked this question before, and uh, so the overall it's going to be added to the budget. I guess I'll bring that question to Ken because there's some taken from reserves. So overall, what it will add to the budget after it's all said and done. Mr. Anderson, would you like to speak to the financial part? Mayor Given, this is being funded completely by the airport. The amount coming from reserves is coming from the reserves of the airport, not the city. And the debt servicing for the $12 million loan will be serviced by the airport as well. So there is no cost to the city of Grand Prairie. Thank you. Councillor McClain. Thank you, Mary Given. I, thank you, Ken, for that. There's no cost, but we are taking it as part of our debt servicing just in case we got to pay for it. Mr. Anderson. Well, being that we are borrowing, yes, it will go into and be included with our total debt, but we have fairly significant capacity there at the moment. And this final one, thank you, Mary. Our total debt with it being added is? Mr. Anderson, thank you, Mary. And I believe it, once we add this, it's about $145 million. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions for administration or motions? Yes. Have anybody in the queue? Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, actually, I was going to ask there's a, an item uh, uh, in the bylaw that talks to number four the city of Grand Prairie shall levy and raise in each year municipal taxes sufficient to pay the indebtedness. And so, actually, Ken's answered my question. It was my understanding that, the, that it certainly won't count to our service debt load uh, because the uh, airport commission or the airport will be taking care of that. And I guess this is a, an important project for the commission. I know it's been in the works for a number of years. Uh, the work's happening, and I think it will help us grow our airport and, and has a significant economic uh, impact to our region. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Adler. So again, looking for a motion for second reading. I don't believe I got that yet. Councillor Council Rice? I need the motion. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Okay. Uh, so we're going through discussion and debate. Is there anybody else that has any further points? Seeing none, then we'll call for the vote on second reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice. I move third reading of borrowing bylaw C1308. Thank you very much.
very much. Councillor Rice, any discussion or debate on third reading? Mm -hmm. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, uh, as part of the airport commission, uh, I'd just like to say that uh, with the 8,500 foot runway, there should be no delays in flights, no matter how bad the weather is. If uh, at this present time, the airplane is uh, operated by the pilot, and he makes a personal decision whether he's got enough runway or not. Uh, we've been running airlines through here since the 70s, big jets, and the most recent years, the uh, pilots have taken upon themselves for safety uh, above and beyond, and they've sometimes left the airport and gone to another location to land where better weather is. Uh, with this other 2,000 feet of runway uh, and the overlay, uh, will be the best runway in the region. So we'll be seeing other planes possibly landing here if weather is bad in their locale. So just bringing that up. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, I don't see anybody else in the queue, so I will call for the vote on third and final reading. Thank you. That motion carries. And Councillor Rice, you want to continue on? With the Thanks, Councillor Rice. And Councillor Rice, I'm sorry, I can't see whether your microphone is on or not. Can you just ensure that it is? Maybe just do that again for the benefit of the, of the uh, viewing audience. There you go. Okay. I move uh, second reading of lending bylaw C-1309 for the Grand Prairie Airway runway expansion and rehabilitation. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate? Uh, as I understand it, this bylaw essentially will to give the money yeah. to the airport and uh, would set out the repayment terms and collect back the Lend the money to the airport. But, no. Exactly, but collect back and yeah. sets the terms of the repayment from the airport to the city. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. That motion carries. Councillor Rice? I move third reading of lending bylaw C-1309. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Councillor Phil. Things on board at the uh, airport, and we should have all the work completed by the end of September. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Phil. So seeing nobody else in the queue, I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Thank you. That motion carries as well. Takes us into the reports portion of our agenda. Uh, the first one is item 8.1, the land use bylaw amendment C 1260-13, a direct control district nine amendment. Look to administration for an introduction. Ms. Ferguson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, administration is recommending that bylaw C 1260-13 uh, to amend the land use bylaw be given first reading and that Monday, September 8th at 6.30 p.m. in Council Chambers be established at the date, time, and location for the public hearing. The amendment would allow an automotive repair, uh, automotive body repair business to be developed as a discretionary use on one of the three lots within uh, the Direct Control District 9, which is located in the area of 125th Avenue and 102nd Street. Um, so I would look for a motion for Council. Councillor Rice. I move first reading for bylaw C-126013 being amendment to the land use bylaw uh, in a uh, direct control district uh, 9 amendment. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any dis excuse me, no discussion or debate on first reading? I'll call for the vote. Councillor Rice. I move that Monday, September 8, 2014, at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers be established as the date, time, and location for the public hearing. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Any discussion as to date, time, and location of this report? I don't see anybody in the queue, so I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And takes us into committee business. And Councillor Rice, I think that's going to be you. Okay. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the 100th Anniversary Committee meeting held July 2nd, 2014. 
minutes, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate as to those minutes? Look like we've got everything in order. If so, then we'll call for the vote. Carries. Councillor Rice, anything you want to highlight from the meeting? Or I certainly wanted to uh, highlight the homecoming weekend. What a rather exciting weekend uh, that was down in the park. And I, I would be remiss if we didn't give a huge big thank you to Janet Longmate and the, I'll say, army of volunteers that she put together. Uh, all of those in the orange shirt at the park that worked tirelessly and uh, there were lots of city staff that signed up as volunteers and uh, uh, certainly other organizations such as Rotary Club and the cadets. Uh, it was an absolutely fabulous day. Uh, the museum broke records, all-time records, uh, just absolutely incredible. And I think a lot of people who had never been to the museum before uh, came away totally impressed at what there is there. Uh, our park, uh, again, uh, really the jewel that uh, gave us a real opportunity. I've heard over and over and over that the fireworks were the best and most awesome ever. Uh, so uh, I, I, I can't say enough about uh, the committee that worked to put that weekend on. Um, and there's lots of other activities we had uh, since our last council meeting. We had the uh, 100 years of transportation. Again, that was a huge success. When we started planning for the 100th anniversary, we wanted to have 100 unique events, and we have well surpassed that. And our activities keep going till the end of the year. Uh, we have many more activities the next Upcoming is the RCMP musical ride, uh, so we're really thrilled uh, to have that. I think that uh, it's been an extremely successful year in terms of celebrating our 100th anniversary. I think the committee um, has really pulled together. Uh, we announced, uh, we released uh, the history book. It started, I think we had 300 um uh, offers, uh, purchases for online offers to purchase before we ever release the book. The author has been extremely cooperative uh, and attended three book signing events, which was, which was re very nice and uh, really good comments on the book. So uh, it's, it's so far, in my opinion, been wildly successful and continues to be. to you and your committee and all the volunteers. Uh, we move on to 9.2, the Community Growth Committee from July 15th. And uh, Councillor O'Toole, was that yours? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Growth Committee meeting held July 15th, 2014. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I'll... Uh, Councillor O'Toole, anything you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Yes, we had one delegation, uh, Jane Cata Sharp from the Revolution Place, brought a proposal in for the possibilities of expansion and mentioned that there was uh, an option of doing it in phases. Uh, we listened to the uh, report that she gave and uh, inclusion at the end of the meeting, we want to know uh, some possibilities of financing and uh, and that sort of thing to possibly make this go through. Uh, but once again, it was just a committee meeting, and uh, it still has to be another report come back. Thanks, Councillor Tool. Thank you. We'll move to 9.3, Community Living Committee from July 15th. Councillor Radford. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held July 15th, 2014. Councillor Radburn, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Radburn, anything to highlight? Um, there's oh, one motion. Business, and then, excuse me. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, 
I would move Council to direct the Mayor to write a letter to the province supporting the increase of provincial funding for public library services for the 2015 budget. This was brought to committee via a letter uh, from the Peace Library System Chair, Veronica Bliska, uh, and uh, basically is asking uh, Mayors and Reeves of, of the area to support uh, emotions as, as is before you tonight. Um, a little bit of background. Um, I guess I'll make four or five uh, points. First of all, uh, provincial funding has not changed since 2009. There's been population increases uh, per, per capita throughout the region, but that that number, the population used to determine grants, hasn't changed since 2010 provincially. Um, obviously, uh, inflation has happened, costs have increased, and therefore some services um, are being compromised. Uh, potentially compromised uh, we, with this lack of uh, funding. And uh, as a result of the, the province not uh, increasing their funding, uh, municipalities have had to step up. And so the, the, uh, the money is uh, received from the province and the, the rates per capita that Peace Library System Mass Municipalities contribute has had to increase so that we can maintain the excellent service uh, that the Peace Library System has been giving. So um, I can those, those, I think, four kind of highlight the main uh, uh, issues surrounding this request, and I would hope the uh, Council would see fit to uh, support the motion. Thanks very much, Councillor Everin. Uh, discussion and debate? Councillor Rice. I'm assuming the, the request or the motion includes that we would CC in Minister Drysdale MLA Everett McDonald, as well as the Premier, and then not just the Minister. Sir Everett, just trying to read that correctly there. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion or debate? Seeing nothing, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well. Councillor Everett, anything else that you want to highlight from there?
questions to ask. Message. Thanks very much, Councilor Redburn. Uh, so we move on to 9.4, Community Safety Committee meeting from July 22nd. Councilor Redburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move Council receive the minutes of the Community Safety Meeting held July 22nd, 2014. Thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that uh, committee recommend council award tender T 29552 14 for the 132nd Avenue upgrades phase two dash CN railway to 102nd Street is awarded to Knelson Sand and Gravel Limited in the amount of $1,672,424.27, excluding GST as the lowest bidder meeting qualification. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. And this is our piece of uh, business that was added tonight from our uh, meeting earlier. And uh, just to clarify, it's actually council approved, mm -hmm. uh, not committee recommend. Yeah. So, so it's, that was a council approved, that tender award. Any discussion or debate? I don't see anyone in the queue, so I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries with uh, two opposed. I believe that handles all of our committee business. Uh, we'd move, Council McLean, did you want to highlight some items? For yeah, the just a couple items. Thank you, Mayor Given. Two of them that was in the paper. One of them was where Fire Chief, uh, big pat in the back to Victoria and Mark, uh, two youths that noticed the fire starting and reported it, and they were able to get to the scene quickly and to extinguish it before it might have burned four or five houses. Uh, so that was been in the paper, and I think that was a very big thing and for something for the Fire Chiefs and for the city knowledge. That, that meant a lot to the community. The other one is, I think, was big that came from it was 132nd Ave from 107th to 116th Street, where that's going to be done this year with traffic lights and paving. I think with weather uh, helping along the way, that that's going to really make that route a lot safer. And that's why I wanted to bring that up. I'm glad that's going forward. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Uh, so we had no items of correspondence. Uh, we had no delegations this afternoon and no notices of motion. Go into council member reports, and we'll start out with the AUMA. Uh, Councillor Rice. I will be meeting on Thursday with the Minister of Municipal Affairs. Uh, he seems to be totally committed to building the straw dog, as he calls it, on the Municipal Government Act and getting it in circulation early this fall. So I think that's very, very gratifying news. Uh, I've also talked to all three of the leadership candidates about strengthening the uh, uh, Municipal Elections Act and, and some of the uh, clauses in there that are a little fuzzy and, and making sure that that's amended to provide that sort of clarification. Uh, so things are actually moving forward. Excellent news, Councillor Rice. And Councillor Rice, why don't we start with Councillor Roundtable? Okay. Since we're there. I attended the Chamber of Commerce homecoming reception uh, as part of the homecoming weekend. I really want to thank them. It was uh, very uh, interesting and nice to see former city manager uh, Dennis Palman, as well as Mr. Hal Tipper, a former member uh, of uh, council, and Mayor Romanchuk, of course, uh, as colorful as ever. Um, one of the sad parts of the weekend was the notification that former city manager Dale Kloster passed away in the middle of that weekend. I attended the presentation of the key to the region to the Ackroyd family. Uh, I think that was uh, extremely well done, and I think it's uh, it's symbolic of the the way the region will work together. Uh, very effectively. I attended the Dino Ball, which was absolutely amazing. Kudos uh, to the organizers. Uh, wow, it uh, 
the tenors were absolutely fantastic. Uh, the whole evening was utterly fantastic, and I look forward to hearing how much money they raised. I'm sure it was a lot. And, uh, well, well, I realize that it's never very smart to uh, poke a stick at the media. All of you are familiar with Councillor Thiessen's uh, red suit from Canada Day, his blue and white check suit from the homecoming. But what you may not know is he has a pink suit, which he wore to the Canadian Cancer Society event yesterday. And he beat Erica in spite of the fact she had pink hair and a pink dress with horses on it. Councillor Thiessen's pink suit. I don't know how he managed it, but he pulled it off. So he emerged victorious in that. So I look forward, I think, to seeing his pink suit in the future. Thank you very much, Councillor Councillor Logan. It was a tremendously busy couple of weeks, but it was a very quiet couple of weeks for me. I did attend some of the anniversary events and some of the uh, ones associated with the uh, Dinosaur Museum, but uh, it was just a low profile. But from what I could see, things went uh, amazingly well. The attendance for me was uh, spotty as I was involved in a series of uh, of health appointments here in Grand Prairie and then several appointments in Edmonton. Uh, unfortunately for the rest of Council, uh, the results were uh, way better than I thought they were going to be, so I will be around for a while. I just want to speak to a couple things. In the last couple of weeks I was on uh, vacation and before that, we went to attended the other events. But the two I want to speak to was on the whole coming weekend, I was not here. I was in the, our Grand Alliance, the town of Grand Cache, to trying to compete in the death race solo. As you may not realize, but I, I do have carry a few extra pounds like other residents in the city of Grand Prairie. And I was able to beat the smoking habit. I'm going to say this a little bit for personal, but it's in our community. And I'm hoping my next goal will be on weight. And... Uh, so there was a very good turnout for that, and um, I'm looking forward to completing it next year. But there's a couple in the city that are in really good shape now. Uh, Director of Community State, Arashio, and then Robert Carroll, I know, that did it solo. And I think they need a big round of applause because uh, they did an amazing job. And uh, usually 60% of people finish this 125 kilometer solo, and only 40% this time because the day was like 32 above. And... <clears throat> I remember uh, being told not to do any of the racing two weeks before, and I did a stage three days before in 30-some above weather, and that kind of wasn't the smartest move to do that. But, I mean, it takes a lot, and um, to actually go through it and see where it takes your energy away and that you need more training is a positive. It gets you wanting to be motivated. Besides that, we are a Grand Alliance, and I was able to meet with some of the individuals in the town of Grand Cash which are looking at the future changes within their area and region. So I thought that was very positive that came out of some of the discussions there. It wasn't just all for the death race. And the other one I'd like to say I was able to come to uh, was Keys of the Peace with uh, Dan Aykroyd and his family, and the family in front of City Council, City Hall here. And I uh, Keys to the region is what got me. And just seeing Dan Aykroyd, his family, just personal, like very good, very outgoing, and glad to be here. And that's what I love, common sense and, and a common individual. And he brought a lot to the to the city and to the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Redmond. Thank you, Mayor Given. Just to highlight a, a, a few things uh, this evening. Um, first, along with uh, Councillor Rice, uh, I attended a uh, uh, group of University of Texas students who were... Uh, uh, whose cause is fighting cancer. They were on a cycle trip to Alaska and they joined us and the uh, Revolution Place, or the Bose Gardens. And the Bose Gardens uh, hosted them uh, one evening as they were on their trek. And so uh, I want to congratulate Jane uh, Catasharp and her team for uh, their hosting. Uh, it was very, actually it was an inspiring evening as you uh, talk to these young uh, people, their, their commitment, their passion for what they were doing and for their cause uh, was 
was invisible and obvious, and uh, uh, just felt uh, very proud of those young people. Um, I, sensed, I attended the Council Information Session with the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. Uh, I attended the launch of the Temporary Foreign, foreign Worker Support Services by Grand Prairie Centre for Newcomers. Uh, it was an additional service. They received some additional grants and money so they can provide that service for foreign workers where they hadn't been able to previously. And uh, being an educator for life, I attended the Reading University graduation. Another 100 uh, grade three students received uh, three weeks of uh, a very individual attention and uh, exciting, uh, I guess, uh, centers, learning centers uh, to improve their reading. And by all accounts, it was again a very, very, uh, very successful. And we have uh, students coming from all three, three of the school districts. Grand Prix Public, Grand Prix Catholic, and Peace Property coming to that event, and uh, led by Rhonda and Linda Side, and uh, Helen Newfell is the university principal, so kudos to those three, but everyone involved, parents and students, uh, for being part of that. Um, and I attended a number of uh, Spirit of the North book launch and chamber mixture, the, the spectacular, the pancake breakfast, the centennial boxing, cake cutting, and again, the spectacular closing show, and the museum and Amber Ball, and um, Helen so, uh, I guess, appro uh, appropriately thanked uh, Janet and the Legion of Volunteers. But uh, as a team member, I want to I want to acknowledge uh, Helen and Chris and Kevin for their work on on uh, both uh, both those projects, the centennial or, or birthday, and the dinosaur museum stuff. Uh, so thank you, uh, thank you, teammates, for all the work that you've done on our, on our behalf. Thank you, Mary Gibbons. Sir Reverend, Councillor. Thank you, Mary Given. Well, it's great to be home after a uh, several week uh, sojourn in uh, in Europe. I definitely learned lots, but uh, it's it's good to be home and um, among friends and, and family again. Um, you know, while I while I didn't get to attend uh, some of the hundredth uh, anniversary events that uh, were going on here, I was able to participate through social media and got to see the uh, the reactions, the pictures, the videos, and it was, uh, you know, from from what I was. What I heard and what I saw, it was a wonderful event, and kudos to everyone uh, who put that on. Um, I was able to attend the uh, the Dino Ball and the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony for the Dinosaur Museum yesterday or on, over the weekend. And uh, again, kudos to the people that are involved in the in the building of the museum. And uh, you know, it's a great addition to the region, and uh, it's excited to see uh, what's going to come of that. Thanks, Councillor Terrence. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Um, did lots of things the last three weeks or so. Uh, I want to start off with uh, highlighting the East Coast Garden Party. Uh, it was a huge success. Uh, not only is it a entertainment venue, but also sports. Uh, lots of ball teams from throughout the region were there. Uh, we had the weather on the side. I also attended the street performers downtown. Uh, once again, another great uh, lineup of people. I attended the Kay McVeigh Golf Tournament on behalf of the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum. I also was part of this 100 Years of Transportation event and uh, really wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, what, how it was going to work out, and what the weather was going to be like. Uh, but uh, I understand we had 165 vehicles of all different types. The museum was a major part, uh, items that they normally can't show because they don't have the display room. We're able to display those items in the uh, Revolution Place. And uh, a local uh, company, A&W, cooked uh, $3,000 worth of hamburgers and they donated that to the MS Society. So that was uh, another huge event. And I'm not very good at judging people, but somebody told me that there was somewhere between nine and 10,000 people downtown. And I know I walked into the farmer's market to get something, and it was a lineup, and people were sold out of product. So I think it was a huge success. Uh, I attended the homecoming launch at the new, bo uh, the new book, Spirit of the North, at the uh, Center 2000. Uh, the lineup to get to the author to sign the book was quite large. So I snuck into the library with my library card and listened to what the, the author had to say and read some of the passages of the people in the area. 
and I ended up buying four more books because I gave them out as gifts. I attended the Century Belt uh, boxing event, uh, was put on uh, this same weekend as the homecoming, and local celebrity Willie DeWitt uh, that's moved away to Calgary to be a criminal defense lawyer uh, was up here center stage. Mr. Mayor Given was there as well uh, and uh, had a successful event there as well. I uh, attended the Centennial Spectacular and also attended my 35-year grad reunion at the Composite High School, all in three days. So it was pretty busy. Um, I attended the Key to the Peace region. Uh, I've heard nothing but great response from uh, everybody I've talked to about that. And I want to thank the local businesses that were able to produce that key uh, and come together on that one. Um, the meetings that I attended for the River of Death and Discovery Museum Board were, I can't tell you how many I attended, but uh, I want to tell you, being part of that dino bike ride, 650 bikers, and from the top of Richmond Hill all the way to the Costco intersection, what a remarkable event that was. That's going to be the talk of the, the city for a number of years. Uh, and uh, when I had some time off, I got a phone call to take Travel Alberta for a quick tour and stop in at the Wapiti Shooters Club because Breakfast Television uh, wanted to do a segment in the areas of sports tourism on what they could do in the local area. So uh, it aired today in Calgary and it's going to be over the next few days. So I'm not a movie star. I didn't star in it by any means, but uh, it is uh, national news, I guess you might say, province-wide news. So the, uh, we had a blogger that was there, and I can't think of his name right now. Uh, no, I can't. But anyhow, uh, that's what I was doing the last three weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. Um, I uh, first just want to add my congratulations and thanks to everybody involved with the homecoming weekend. It certainly was a centennial spectacular, just as advertised. Um, Councillor Rice, Councillor O'Toole, uh, all of your committee members and volunteers did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for that and on behalf of the whole community, because I know the whole community that, that participated enjoyed it. Um, and the same to all the organizers of the uh, dinosaur uh, activities over the course of the weekend. I think a fantastic job and congratulations to the County of Grand Prairie uh, for all their work in spearheading this organization and uh, the museum. Uh, certainly proud to be a partner of that and uh, appreciate the recognition that they brought to our region uh, and pr proud that the City of Grand Prairie can support that. Uh, I won't go into any detail on any of the other events. I did want to note uh, one passing that's happened since we last met with Council. I want to note the passing of Leo Lozon. Uh, I attended his funeral at uh, St. Joe's Church and uh, yeah, um, certainly will miss Leo as a part of our community, a longtime Rotarian and community business member involved in the Chamber of Commerce and many other areas in the community. And uh, obviously he'll be missed and we are, uh, my thoughts and wishes go to his family. Um, and with that, I'll call our council meeting adjourned.